learned a few things over the time being together, huh? That's right. That's right. I've been more. <laughs> yeah, love it. Is it time? It's time. Oh, it is time. I know it came up. Wow. Quick. I know. <laughs> that screen but there we go well there we go <laughs> hey everybody it is tuesday yes it is tuesday march the 31st 2020 and here believe. we are another day at home i know I, <laughs> another day at home, <laughs> day at home. I, I saw somebody uh, talking about their uh, travel plans uh coming up and it was yeah. uh to the window to the door to the window we to posted the door. something like about our updated show that's our show schedule show schedule yep. going from the couch to the garage <laughs> to the patio to the kitchen such good times such good times ah we're going around the apartment <laughs> time and time again that's right well hey if you are joining us this morning be sure to put hashtag hello nights or hashtag cup of awesome that's right and i see nikki joined us so she should be putting hashtag hello nights or hashtag cup of awesome we're waiting for we're it. We're waiting, waiting for it. Waiting, waiting for, for it. it. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Awesome. Well, you know, we had such a blast yesterday with our uh, conversation with Dylan Manley. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's crazy, that guy. He is crazy. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it uh, got us excited because this whole week is, is all interviews. I know. So fun. Um, and then we one... figured since we got nothing to do, <laughs> no one else has anything going on. Let's do nothing together. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so uh, we're hanging out and uh, we're talking to people. We had to do a quick adjustment in our schedule. One of our uh, people had a emergency meeting pop up. So online meeting, online meeting, because uh, everything's online. Everything's online. <laughs> so we shifted things around and it's uh, all good. It's all good. And and today's gonna be a really great conversation. Yes, uh, truly. Um, Preston Cave is one of our favorite, favorite people, people in ever. all the world. Yeah, and uh, it's I. I'm excited to talk to him. And, I know. Hmm. We have to do these interview things just an excuse to get to talk to him, right? <laughs> That's true. Please talk to us. <laughs> That's right. Please. Please. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, you're going you're gonna to love him, so we'll bring him on in there in just a second. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else interesting that we, we need to Since bring Since 24 hours ago. Since 24 hours ago, I know. Yeah. When, well, you know, it's funny. Like, I, I always talk about, we pattern this on kind of the Kelly and Ryan thing. Right. And they have this little banter piece at the front. But, you know, typically... They're in New York City, and they're going out to plays and shows yeah. and dinners and things like that. There's and so much to do there. So much to talk about. And, yeah, mm -hmm. right now there's not. So, no. Um, Everybody should. I, I sat on the couch really well yesterday. That was good. Yeah. No. Yeah. Did that really well. Um, yeah, yeah. There wasn't a whole that. lot. There wasn't <laughs> a whole lot. That's about it. Not much to talk about. So it's a really great time to have some guests yeah. to... <laughs> so we're gonna so we're going to go ahead and bring our guest on now and uh Who do I want, we have today we have uh preston cave um is a christ follower a husband a father a pastor a speaker and an author uh his life purpose is to help broken people become whole and whole people become broken for broken for broken people nice. he's a veteran ministry leader who has experienced local church ministry as well as several parachurch ministries he currently serves as the Mission and Discipleship Coordinator with the Texas Baptist Men, and he lives with his wonderful wife, Sarah D., yes. and their kids, Perry and Titus, in Pecan Plantation, Texas. So everybody, please welcome to Woo! the stage, Mr. Preston Cave. The red carpet goes forth. Yes. <laughs> Hello, hey, I've sir. I've got my David and Kylie uh, Knight coffee look. mug, so the coffee tastes so much better <laughs> drinking it out of this. I, I don't know what you guys did to the cups. But well, you, they're, they're, uh, they're made with love. with love. That's my right. Friend. Okay, that makes sense. They're red, so that makes well, perfect sense. Right. Well, exactly. I don't... Oh, that looks so good. Yes, we're all oh, that was a sipping good cup of from... Coffee right there. All kinds of weird on so how are you guys coffee. doing? Well, we are good. We're, we're you're small, good. though. I'm trying to figure out. I've got... There we go. You're smaller. <laughs> <laughs> You're not small in my book. Hey, oh. I don't know if it's uh, too early in the show, but I did want to show you something. I've been watching oh, you guys because oh. I've had you guys come over several times in yeah. my ministry, and I've been really kind of watching you to see how you do certain things. Oh. Um, and I've actually got a deck of cards. Okay. Oh. You're okay. I want to do a trick for you. 
and see actually it's not a trick it's an illusion this is like real magic stuff <laughs> you have learned I'm, I'm impressed yeah okay so let me show you this real quick so this is normal deck of cards normal deck of cards. i'm not seeing any of it i'm seeing okay. the back of the cards yes. normal deck of cards so what i'm going to ask you to do is i'm just going to flip the cards like this and i want you to say stop okay okay you go ahead. all right here okay. we go ready yep so, stop stop right yeah. here so you choose this card right here yes Okay, I'm not looking at it, but I can't see it, okay? Can okay. you see it? We can. Right. we can see it. I'm putting yes. it back here, okay? <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to set it aside, and I want you to try to project through the digital waves what that card was. You ready? Okay. <laughs> oh, man, it's about the theatrics. <laughs> I think you had a learned. queen of clubs. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you That's it. Much. We quit. Hey, so We're done. Do you think that it's time for me to quit my day job and just go full time doing what you guys are doing you know i think with uh, all the work that's available out there now for uh, traveling magicians i think it's a perfect time for you to jump in yeah oh, thank you you're, you're not just saying that no, <laughs> no i'm not <laughs> well, there are a couple tricks that i've watched you guys do and i just still don't know how you do them like the uh the notepad trick. oh yeah i still don't yeah. know how you guys do that one so. oh well mm, then good we're doing our job because you've had us yeah. several times you have yes. So. Yeah. Well, I love I love you guys. I love having you. Oh. You do a great job. We love you thank and you. your family. Yeah, you guys oh, are, are really fantastic. Well, thank you for <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Um, well, thanks for jumping on and joining us, and uh, thanks for showing off your uh, David and Kyle Knight coffee mug. Right. Yeah, yeah. Which only go to clients. So. Books. Mm. <laughs> What's that? I, I learned the trick in your books, and I got the coffee mug at the show. So <laughs> there you go. Right. There you go. I'm a fan. <laughs> so, uh, so let's jump in. And I, I did talk a little bit about uh, what you do, but uh, tell us a little bit more about um, kind of um, what it. Well, let's start with uh, what have you been doing because your new role is pretty is pretty recent. Um, yeah. So start with what you've been doing, how long you were doing that for, and then kind of what made you make the jump to your new position. Yeah. So I've been in ministry for 18 years and 15 of those 18 years have been with the local church ministry, uh, student ministry or uh, associate pastor, family ministry type of roles. And, uh, and I've, all, I've always loved the local church. And um, so it's always been a perfect fit for me. But um, over the past couple of years, I've really felt God leading me more towards uh, organizational church, Christian organization, uh, parachurch work. And so I've been getting more and more involved in that. I worked part-time with Super Summer Evangelism training camps, and you know about Super Summer. Uh, it's the best camp in Texas. I mean, I, I have a lot of friends in camps, and I love camp ministry, but as far as uh, what Super Summer does, it's the only camp around that, that strictly focuses on evangelism training. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what makes Super Summer unique. It's not better than other camps. It's just different than other camps. But I've been working with them for a couple of years and uh, have been really getting a heart towards parachurch work more full time. Mm -hmm. um, and so this past semester, or I'll say past semester, uh, this past mm -hmm. fall was able to, was given an opportunity to have conversations with uh, TBM, uh, Texas Baptist Man. We'll talk a little bit about what they do in a moment. But um, we started talking about uh, this new role that they were trying to develop with mission and discipleship mm -hmm. and uh, and one thing led to another and the opportunity became available. And, um, I had felt like it was time. I felt like my, the way God had really wired me was more yeah. for that than just being a local church ministry. So, um, I did not have to move, didn't have to leave. So I still get to be a part <laughs> so of my local good. church. That's a blessing. Um, but I now have the best of both worlds. I can still be part mm -hmm. of the church that I've been a part of Lakeside Baptist in Granbury. Great church, great mm -hmm. staff, yes, um, but now I get to also help other churches around the state of Texas. So, hey, real quick, you might be hearing my dog bark in yeah. the background. Hey, we're all at home, right? Exactly. exactly. It's exactly. all good. We wish we had a dog barking in the background. We miss our well, puppy. Well, some days you can have my dog. <laughs> some days. I love that. Yeah. So. so, well, and, and talk to us about uh, your new role. So you're with Texas Baptist Men. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what, what is it that they do, and um, in particular, how are they responding to this outbreak? Yeah, so we, we're Texas Baptist men, but we've been calling ourselves TBM for a while because really Texas Baptist men gives an inaccurate picture of what we really do and who we really are okay. um, because we're more than just Texas. We're actually an international ministry. We do ministry oh. all over the world. We do mission mm -hmm. trips and water well ministries. Mm -hmm. We've got a couple partnerships in other countries that we're not quite ready to announce, but we're super excited about. Um, so we're an international ministry, actually. So we're more than just Texas. 
we're actually more than just Baptists. We're primarily Baptists, started out Baptists, but we have volunteers from Methodist churches, from non-denominational churches, Bible churches, um, other denominations. So, so we're more than just Texas. We're more than just Baptists. And we're more than just men. About 42% of our volunteers are actually women. Wow. Which is crazy. Yeah. So good. Um, yeah. I, I didn't even know that. You know, yeah. but so we've been calling ourselves TBM because we want to give a more accurate depiction. TBM stands for Texas Baptist Men. Nobody's fooling, being fooled by that. But, <laughs> uh, but that's, that's really an exciting, it's an exciting time to be a part of TBM because God is doing this really unique thing um, that has broken us out of what we originally started as mm -hmm. to say, hey, I'm, I'm bigger than what your vision was. And my vision for TBM is bigger than what you ever thought possible. So, but what TBM really does is we bring help, hope, and healing to those that are hurting, to those that are uh, downcast and those that are being a part of some type of disaster. Of course, right now it's the coronavirus disaster, but um, we do disaster relief, disaster recovery, and tornado. Uh, yeah, you guys were disasters. just out in Tennessee, weren't you? Yes, yeah, we yeah. were out in Tennessee uh, not too long ago. We were in Dallas when Dallas had the tornadoes. Mm -hmm. um, we have these feeding units that can feed up to 15,000 meals a day. Wow. Uh, 15,000? responders or to the, uh, to the communities. Yeah, it's crazy the equipment that we have in our disaster Amazing. relief program, um, Dwayne Carter, uh, those guys are doing an incredible job bringing help, hope, and healing to that community and to whatever community that we're part of. We Hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, mm -hmm. I mean, wherever the need is, uh, if we are capable and able to do it, we will do it. Um, so, yeah, we have uh, food, feeding units. We have shower units that go into these communities and, and just set up and gives the community uh a place to take a clean shower sometimes mm -hmm. it's just they've got the food or we've provided mm -hmm. the food for them but it's been days since they've uh, had a clean warm shower and there's something that happens with you mentally mm -hmm. when you can step into a warm shower and then walk out and you just you're uplifted <laughs> so you much know better. yeah yeah well i know yeah. i feel like that when i go out and mow my yard and then i come back in and i'm like i need a shower right, right? but um could you imagine not having a shower for a few days mm -hmm. and it, it makes a difference so <clears throat> so there's that and we dig water wells all over the, the world mm -hmm. um, and we'll bring in these water filtration systems uh, to these remote villages we've got this hand crank uh, that we can hand drill a water well in these remote villages where there's no power wow. or we can't get our machinery there yeah and we also have these bucket filtration systems that uh, if they can have their if they just have water it could be a dirty water source we'll bring in these portable bucket filtration systems that are very affordable and uh, and help and show them how to build them and how to maintain them, mm, and wow. they can take their dirty water, and within a day they can have uh, up to 15 gallons of clean water every day. And we can provide a clean water for so at least important. one household it with is. one of these water filtration systems. It's a really neat ministry. Oh, yeah. um, so what we're doing right now with the coronavirus, we have just recently uh, given out over 15,000 of the N95 medical masks yeah. to our first responders. Now, yeah. these are the masks that are in really high demand, yeah, they are. very short supply. And so we've already given out over 15,000 of those. And we're in multiple conversations with our local, our state, and our uh, national leaders about what our next wave of response is going to be in this coronavirus. So we're very active yeah. um, even as we speak. You guys just meet those basic needs for people all over the place. In fact, I often see TBN mentioned on it, even our local news. They're like, yeah. oh, these guys from Texas are heading out to so-and-so or whatever um, to help yeah. out. So it's, it's great yeah. work. And let me say this real quick. You know, uh, TBM used to be known as the, I mean, it was always known as a great organization, but people typically thought of TBM as, oh, man, I can't wait until I retire so that I can start getting involved because that's mm -hmm. what you do. You mm -hmm. retire and then you have more free time and you get involved in TBM. Yeah. Well, listen, TBM is for more people than just uh, those that are in retirement stage. It's for us too. And it's for our teenagers and our college students as well wow. because we, we need young backs. And <laughs> these true. teenagers and these college students, they want to make yeah. a difference in the world. They want to leave their mark. And what better ministry than TBM because you can see immediate results. We get in there, we'll resurrect a house that had been destroyed, mm. and then we will go to the next place. And you can actually see the work of your hands. And so it's a really cool ministry. If you want to leave your mark on the world, there's no better organization, at least in the state of Texas, than TBM. But mm. keep that in mind. Um, if you want to get involved with that, I'm just going to throw it out there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's tbmtx.org. 
Okay. Um, tbmtx.org. And you can do right now, especially it's tbmtx.org slash crisis. Mm. And you can get more information on how to get involved. So wow. it's a Great. cool ministry. I'm Thanks, very honored awesome. to be a part of it. Awesome. That is, that is fantastic. Um, man. Well, I don't even know where I want to go after that. <laughs> <laughs> I probably threw, threw out a lot of information there. It was but great, I'm drinking though, out huh? my coffee cup. Here, so yeah, it's very interesting to hear. You know, you hear the name a lot. Mm -hmm. At least you do around here yes. in Texas. But just finding out a little bit more, like feeding that many people um, at one time is yeah, fantastic. So good. I, I think they should add an N into their, their acronym. So it'd be TBNM, the best need meters. <laughs> see, and then you yes. hear it, you see, that's... I'll clap for that. Okay. <laughs> that's a freebie. Um, yeah, yeah. So, I'll write that down. In I'll addition, about it next board meeting. There you go. Um, <laughs> in addition to all your um, your hard work with, um, you know, TBM and uh, with students, you uh, we got to see you many times as, as a student pastor. Mm -hmm. um, you're also an author. You've written mm -hmm. several books. Um, and in fact, your most recent is Rewriting Fathers, yeah. right? That's your most recent one? Yep. It is, yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, and I, I love it. I, I haven't, uh, <laughs> I feel terrible. I haven't finished it. I've, I've got like a stack of books. I am partway through it, though. Um, <laughs> well, it, I'm honored that you just picked it up. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really good book, and especially for uh, somebody who's had um, a somewhat contentious relationship with my father at times. Um, it's, it's, been, um, it's been good for me to read. But I'd, I'd love to know, what was your inspiration for, for writing that book? Well, <clears throat> gosh, it was... Let's see, two years ago, we were at Passion, and um, it was in Dallas that particular year, mm. and uh, Louis Giglio was up, and he was preaching mm. on uh, the fatherless society and the effects of a fatherless society, mm. and I, being in family ministry for so many years, I, I've known those statistics, and, I, and that's some of the reason why I've done what I've done in family ministry, but uh, the way he communicated it and just some of the things he was sharing, it just really burdened me more than more than uh, at any time before. And so I, I left before he was finished with his message. I just walked out in the, the lobby area and I was just kind of pacing around. You know how sometimes you walk a out message on or a book messes you up so much <laughs> you just kind of have to pace around. Uh -huh. um, so I was just kind of pacing around and I thought, gosh, you know, what could I do? What is my part in, in remedying that issue, mm. right? And God uh, gave me the acronym FATHERS and the, what that acronym stood for. So he gave it mm -hmm. to me, but he didn't give me any content. He just gave me just the acronym, right? Wow. So I was like, okay, well, cool. I'll keep that in the back of my mind. Maybe in the next year or two, I'll write something. Mm. Well, about a month later, brother who is a, no, he, he's nomadic. What that means is he and his family, they just travel around. They are RVers. And so he's wow. a marketing director and a graphic designer. As long as he has the internet, he can do his nice. work, right? So they, you know, in the summertime in Texas, is super hot. They'll go up north <laughs> where it's a little bit cooler. In the wintertime, they'll come down here and spend time with family. So, nice. but he was in my. That does sound awesome. Oh yeah, 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 I'm super jealous. Yeah. But um, but he was in my house and we were just chatting. It was about a month after that experience at Passion, and uh, and he was talking about some journals that he was making, um, and he and I were kind of collaborating. Hey, what is something we could do? And so I just kind of threw it out there. I told him about the father's uh, idea. Mm -hmm. And by the end of that night, we had everything planned out uh, and the timeline about when we were going to get it done. And he was going to focus on the journal aspect of it. And I was going to focus on the content uh -huh. of it. And we were going to put it together and he was going to design it. And, you know, our goal was to have it done by April so that we could have it ready for Father's Day, for uh, last year's Father's Day. Yeah. Um, and man, God really blessed the, the preparation of that. And we, by April, we had it in, I mean, we had it in print form and we had it on audible. We, I have a buddy who uh, reads on audible. And so we had it in audible form as well. So you oh, can nice. actually listen to it. Nice. Um, and it's actually really good content of all the, the works, mm -hmm. books uh, and other things I've produced. This is something I'm most proud of because I really do feel like if dads were just put into practice, uh, the short, you know, uh, um, strategies that we have mm -hmm. here, I think the world would be a better place. And now mm -hmm. more than ever, the world needs dads to step it up and to be good, godly fathers. So, uh, so yeah, that's kind of where that came from. And we put a, a 40 day legacy journal in there because mm -hmm. I know from my, from myself and my brother, we talked about this. 
my dad died in, in 2007. He died of a car wreck. It was unexpected. We, you know, it was just a really devastating time. And that was the, the most difficult year of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember after uh, he passed away, we had his funeral. And then a few days later, we go into his house to go through all of his stuff and kind of clean out, you know, all of his things. And my dad never journaled except for a short period in his life. And we found those journals and they were just on little notepads. I mean, mm-hmm. it was nothing fancy, just little notepads. But as I was reading his words, I realized for the first time that I never looked at my dad as a real person. Mm-hmm. I always looked at him as some supernatural person who didn't think the way I thought, didn't have the same feelings that I had, never had any struggles or whatever it may be. Um, but when I read his journals, for the first time, I realized that my dad was a real person and he had the same mm-hmm. ambitions that I had. He had the same feelings and struggles and insecurities and other things that I had. Um, so when we started talking about doing this project, we said we have to have a little part where dads can journal because our kiddos, maybe for the first time, will actually hear from the heart of a dad mm-hmm. when that dad gives that to them at a milestone moment in their life and they mm-hmm. read and say, wow, my dad is normal. He's a human being as well. <laughs> so that was that was kind of our design for that. I love it. It's awesome. It's awesome. Well, thank you for doing that and thank you for um, for uh, walking down the edge and, and, and making that happen. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. It's great. Good book. All right. Well, now it is time for our lightning round that we call Five Questions. Oh, oh man. No. Now, is this timed or anything like that? It's not timed. No, no. It should uh, be, shouldn't okay. it? So the stress <laughs> is off. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Hang on. I'm going to stretch you out because you're... I don't know what happened to my screen today. All right. Let's go back here. Okay, so let's start off. First of all, what is your favorite Bible verse? My favorite Bible verse is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Uh, it says, uh, God made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God. It's this great exchange. You know, Jesus uh, was righteous, yet he took on our sinfulness mm-hmm. so that we who are sinful can take on his righteousness. And what it says is, is that... Um, we might become the righteousness of God. I love the, the idea behind um, the phrase that says, you know, we're all sinners in need of a Savior. Mm-hmm. Well, yes and no. We were sinners in need of a Savior. Now we are, according to that verse, becoming the righteousness of God. So I think if we start to identify ourselves no longer as a sinner in need of a Savior, but as someone who is becoming the righteousness of God, We'll actually live according to what we identify as. Mm-hmm. If we identify ourselves as the righteousness of God, we'll live more righteous lives. Where if we identify ourselves as a sinner in need of a savior, we'll continue being sinners, right? Mm-hmm. We'll Absolutely. continue living as a sinner. So I mean Paul anyways, over and over commentary. refers to us as saints, right? Yeah. And how many Absolutely. of us think of ourselves as saints? Yeah, and we're children of the king, right? Exactly. We're children yeah. of God. We're children of the king, so we need to act like royalty. Love that. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Act like royalty. That's good. Um, all right. That's a t-shirt. <laughs> you're mm-hmm. uh, so you're stuck at home. What are you binge watching right now? <laughs> Anything and everything, basically. <laughs> um, it's crazy because, you know, you said you're going to ask that question, and I'm like, oh, man. Uh, we have been binge watching on Marvel movies, so we're oh. catching up, you know, and so the ones we haven't seen, yeah. we'll watch them, or we'll just rewatch. Like last night, we watched uh, Infinity War tonight. The night before, we watched the one that was right before that. I can't remember. The, uh, Are you watching them in order? Uh, kind of. My son's helping us with that. But yeah. basically, we're just, you know, we're, we're, my other son wants us to start watching some of the Spider-Man uh, oh, yeah. shows. So we're going to yeah. maybe watch some of those. So anything Marvel um, nice. or really, we're doing some indie movies, too. Just kind of taking okay. new things out, right? Why right. not? So, it's true. None mm-hmm. of them have been any good, but hey, it's <laughs> we got all the time in the world. So. There you go. Pretty much at the moment. Well, it, it, yeah, like Dylan yesterday, he's like, yeah, I shouldn't say this, but I'm watching Tiger King. Yeah. So. <laughs> you know, we actually watched the, the preview for that last night because we were like, what is all the hype about this? Yeah. And it's it's one of those things that that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen, but why am I so intrigued <laughs> exactly. to watch it? So I think we're going to start watching it, unfortunately. I think we're so. going to as well. <laughs> it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. It's going to happen. Um, all right. If you could have any other job than the one you have now, what would it be? I love books. Um, and so I've always wanted to own this quaint little bookstore oh. that has a coffee shop attached to it. So because to me, I'm, yeah, I'm an yeah. introvert ultimately. So like for me to sit in a room that's just full of books with a good cup of coffee, oh. there's no better place to be. Amen, brother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. so I could totally do that for a living. Once this is all over, that can happen. 
Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right. I like it. Uh, well, and, and, sorry. This is this is off the uh, the original five questions. Uh -oh. What is your? Um, I know. Sorry. What's your go to coffee drink? Are you a, are you an espresso person? You drip coffee? Do you have preference? What do you um, like? Drip coffee is really like I'm pretty simple. Um, <laughs> I like Chemex, but I don't have the patience to to make it. And my wife broke my Chemex pot a while back, and yeah, she did it accidentally. But um, and we just haven't replaced it. Mm -hmm. But interestingly enough. I used to put foo foo coffee, you know, put uh -huh. all the sugars and creams in. Um, and my wife and I were talking about we need to start cutting out our sodas. We need to start cutting out sugars and, and syrups so that we can kind of just kind of live a healthy life. Mm -hmm. um, and one day I'm sitting there, we cut out our, our sodas. So that made us want to drink more coffee because we needed the caffeine, right? right. Um, and so we were real proud of ourselves for cutting out Dr. Pepper. We didn't want to drink our calories, but. We still drank a lot of coffee, and I was still putting sugar and cream oh, yeah. in my coffee. And one day, I'm sitting there making my sugar and cream coffee, and I look over, and my wife is drinking her coffee black uh, with no sugar and cream because she's disciplining herself not to do that. And at that moment, it was as if God told me, <laughs> Preston, you can't have your wife drink a more manly coffee than you. <laughs> so from that moment on, I started disciplining myself to drink black coffee, and now I love it. I can't have sugar or cream in my coffee. So I'm simple. Just give me some good, straight drip coffee, and I'm good to go. Okay. I love it. I love it. All right. So um, what is your um, – and I know I know. right now you you, you guys are going plant-based, right? Yeah. With everything. Yeah, yeah. But generally speaking, what is your <laughs> favorite to-go order? Since we can't go to a restaurant and eat in the restaurant, everything is just – drive through what is your favorite to go order yeah well either chick-fil-a uh chicken tenders because those things are amazing yes uh, which i do miss those <laughs> or uh panda express okay. i love okay. panda express yeah oh, right. so, yeah, yeah that's my my favorite go-to places okay. awesome and then uh last question what are you reading right now i just got finished uh reading a book by watchman knee called spiritual authority Ooh. Okay. And it is one of the best books I've ever read in my life. Mm -hmm. um, it really is such a good book. I mean, I emptied out one of my pens underlining all the great things in that book. Wow. Um, it's really a good book. So Spiritual Authority by Watchman Nee. Um, okay. But because it was so good, I went ahead and picked up another one of his books called The Prayer Ministry of the Church or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm reading that right now. So it's really, okay. it's really good. Awesome. Awesome. Well, man, I, I thank you so much for jumping on with us today. Um, I appreciate you spending your time. Um, I appreciate all you do for the kingdom and all the yeah. ways you've, you've shown love to us over the years. Um, sure. Really, you're, you you're just a fantastic we're person. Big fans. We are. Yeah, well, I'm a big fan of you guys as well. Mm -hmm. If y'all, if uh, or those that are watching, if you want to get involved with what TBM is doing, yep. just go to tbmtx.org um, slash crisis. Um, we've got some other things we've got producing uh we've got a new easter resource so tbmtx.org slash easter you can look on that and sign up for that we've got little video devotionals that will happen oh, all uh, of, the, of the days during the passion week little things like that mm. are available to you so yeah um get involved in what we're doing or do something do, so, do something. something i like that yes. that's it yeah sir yeah. awesome well thank you sir and uh we look forward to talking to you again yeah. Yes, yes. Thank you all so much for having me. Thanks, I love Preston. you guys. You bet. Love you too. Bye. 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 Oh, man. Well, Hey, can you hear us now? Now you can oh, hear us. Oh, wow. Wow, we just had that great conversation. Yeah, we did. I, I know what I did wrong. That was my bad. Okay. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> well, that was a great conversation with yeah. Preston. It was. <laughs> I'm trying to repeat the whole thing. Um, yeah. We, um, uh, yeah, so uh, tomorrow we should have Shane Pruitt on with us, and that should be another good conversation. Yeah. He's a fantastic guy as well. He really is. Um, I don't know if he's quite as good as Preston, but you know. <laughs>
That's all right. Um, and then uh, if you want to donate to us, you can go to paypal.me slash night illusions. Uh, we'll put that link in the, in the comments along with a link for um, the TBM that, uh, pr that uh, Preston was talking about. Yeah, TBM. Yeah. TBM. TBM. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and maybe even a link to his book so you can go check that out. Right. All right. Any other thoughts? That's all for now. I think we'll be back again tomorrow right here at 10 a.m. That's right. With Shane Pruitt. So be sure to tune in. Set the reminder if you don't get notified, be sure to go to notifications on this page and click all notifications. That's right. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. We will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.